Good afternoon. My name is Joshua Houston. I'm General Counsel of Texas Impact. Uh, we promote public policy consistent with the social principles of our member denominations, and we support House Bill 1456 that allows counties to intervene in water rate cases. Uh, it is a basic social principle of all of our member faith communities that people must have access to clean and affordable water. Uh, being the faith community, we are kind of unique in that we have our own utility bills that we pay, but we also, uh, more importantly, uh, we have people come to our congregations every day that need help with their utility bills as well. And for all those reasons, we decided to uh, to learn something about rate making. And when the opportunity presented itself in the city of Austin electric rate case, um, we got involved. Uh, we learned a lot. We learned how uh, time intensive, how resource intensive, how expensive it is to be able to bring a case at SOA on, on behalf of an affected party. Uh, having been involved with a, a fairly relatively organized group that was the affected party, uh, I have no idea how private citizens could ever be able to mount such an endeavor, uh, a resource, time, expensive endeavor, especially in rural areas, especially for elderly people on fixed incomes that are, that are have a bigger per capita in rural areas, especially for people of modest means that are affected by, affected the most by rising utility rates, and especially when the majority of legal proceedings occur hours away in Austin. Um, in electric and gas, as Chairman Coleman mentioned, uh, cities have the right to intervene already on behalf of their constituents, but in water there are many IOUs, investor-owned utilities, that are only in rural areas. There is nothing of any size or uh, that except the county that is able to fill this role. Um, rate making is a very specialized field. It requires uh, a, a whole lot of different kinds of experts, accountants, engineers, you know, people who have a lot of experts in utilities. And while there may be state agencies that protect the consumer, they're severely underfunded. They do great work, but they lack the resources that are required. Um, and even if they did, it's often local officials who live in that area that know the needs of that area the best. Uh, local officials have both an interest in balancing economic development of the county with fair rates to their constituents that a state agency based in Austin just, just simply lacks. Um, one of the things, another thing that we learned in the city of Austin red case is about large fixed fees. In the electric world, they're called customer charges. In the water world, they're called base charges. Regardless of what you call them, they're basically a, a fee that customers pay just because they're a customer. It's not based on consumption. So to put it another way, no matter how much you conserve on your consumption, you're going to pay this amount no matter what. Uh, I passed out a chart to you that I believe you have in front of you. Uh, it compares rates, uh, water and sewer, for a municipal for municipal water utilities with the rates of a couple different investor-owned utilities. In the case of Monarch, uh, their average bill for 5,000 gallons used is about $142. Uh, $100 of that is from fixed charges alone. So 39.95 is the water charge. The sewer charge is 59.90. That is uh, 100 bucks right there. That is based that you're going to pay no matter what, no matter how much you use. Only the remaining $42 is based on your actual usage. So in this time of statewide drought, it is not unfair to say that fixed charges are anti-conservation. Uh, they fail to send a proper pricing signal to the to the customer in order to get them to use less. But of equal importance to the church, these fixed charges are very regressive in the way they do rate making. It puts a disproportionate burden on people of lower fixed income. Uh, in a rate case, counties could then go in and review these rate designs and, and, and have a way to, to alter these rate designs to make them less regressive, more conservation oriented. Uh, it's also important to note that this bill is very limited and focused. It is not a mandate for counties to intervene. It expands the definition of an affected county. Uh, but it's not aimed at small moms and pops. It only kicks in when the IOU has more than 3,000 customers or has a rate increase of larger than 25%, and 25% is a pretty large, significant rate increase on, on a customer base. Uh, when the state grants a monopoly to a private entity on a commodity as precious and essential to life as water, we have to have processes to check and balance that power and to ensure that rates are, are just and reasonable and based on actual costs. Uh, we think that given the county the ability to intervene, to go in, to look at the books uh, on the public's behalf as the best solution to prevent these rate shocks on people, especially people of fixed income. Uh, I'd like to thank Representative Gooden for this legislation, and I'd like to thank the committee for your time this afternoon. Uh, questions? Thank you very much. Thank you.
Thanks for the work that you all do. Oh, thank you.